Chapter 23, The Curse of Bad Goddess. And then it happened. My Indian wife came home one day with her hair shy, dyed shock blonde like Erd from the All My Goddess cartoon series, and her attitude changed almost immediately. She said she didn't love me anymore. She didn't want to hang out with me or talk to me. She didn't want to do anything if it didn't involve our daughter. I decided enough was enough, and it became quite clear that Angela was just using me so her terrible mother and brother would have a place to stay. We decided we were going to separate, but we weren't going to get divorced. I would cash in our savings, pay off her debts, and she would move out, forcing her family to move with her. We would still be married in name to ensure that I fulfilled my obligation to take care of her daughter, but we were allowed to see other people. In a terrible, ironic twist, I felt like this was a comeuppance for making fun of Kazuki Fujishima's marital situation. He was married and had a girlfriend on the side waiting for him to get divorced. I had brutally made fun of him, and now I was in a similar situation. If I dated anybody while I was still married to Angela, I would be labeled a major hypocrite. The goddesses had me in checkmate. And then I remembered how Angela dyed her hair, and I began to ask myself, was this the work of witchcraft? I pointed out the coincidence to Angela, and she didn't know what I was talking about. She didn't know who Erd was and didn't care about all my goddess. In fact, she didn't care about anything that I had made. She fell out of love with me way back when I became obsessed with collecting Alamo Drafthouse pre-shows. At first, this killed me to my core, so I expressed myself the only way I could. I made a bad goddess cartoon called Love Bites, where Dr. Wet and school that discussed my marital problems, and Kiyuchi and Beldandi act out my arguments with Angela. It's extremely weird to watch, too. If you're familiar with those characters' personalities on the anime show, Kiyuchi and Beldandi had a fantasy relationship where she believed in them no matter what, and my relationship depictions in the bad goddess cartoons were all too real. I had taken Kazuki Fujishima's characters to places they had been unable to go in this universe, but at the same time, Jesus Christ, where the relationships went was just depressing. I explained in the cartoon to my daughter about how my father's divorce was set off by a marital fight that happened one night over a screening of Fight Club. My father somewhat related to Edward Norton's character, plus he was a chemist who knew how to make chemical bombs that Brad Pitt did. Seeing Edward Norton sink into schizophrenic insanity scared the living shit out of my father, and he just lost it that night. For my mother, it was the tipping point, the last straw. Yes, it's true. David Fincher's Fright Club is responsible for my parents' divorce. I got my revenge years later when I pulled my back-tracing trick on the Alamo Drafthouse pre-show at a Fight Club showing at Lakeline. Take that, David Fincher. Angela invited me out to our last Easter family picnic at Garrison Park. I captured the moment on video against her wishes, but I regret nothing. It was the one video documented of a time where the nieces and the sodas were happy. Just us cooking hamburgers and hot dogs and the kids playing with a football. It's a happy moment, suspended in time forever. Like the last days of Vulcan video, that moment will never exist again. And so Angela moved out. I didn't try to stop her. I wanted to help her make the transition, and still do to this day. My relationship breakup problems were starting to take their toll on me. I wanted to film a personal documentary about my grandfather, Roy Niece, at his lake house called Roy My Boy. My father agreed to take me and my daughter, Lindsay, one weekend, but when we showed up, it became apparent that my daughter had bugs in her hair. They treated us like a couple of plague victims that were contagious. Jim's wife, Nancy, worked on Lindsay's hair, but they left without us. My planned film fell apart as if by bad luck. It seemed like a lot of my film ideas were falling apart, as if the real Verdandi was angry with me, because in portraying my breakup with Angela in the cartoon through her and Kiichi, I had essentially damaged her relationship in the cartoon world. This run of bad luck was Verdandi's revenge. There was also an incident where I almost got into a car accident. I went to Alamo Drafthouse South Lamar that same night to see the latest Terror Tuesday, which turned out to be Final Destination 2, about everyone dying in a severe auto collision. The coincidence was frightening. Seeing the serendipity coincidences and freak act of fakes, acts of fate in the movie was so frightening to me as I had felt like I was living them in real life just without the murders, so I walked out. I tried to set up another film event. This time it would be with Zombie Life TV's favorite tarot card reader, Nero de Valoy, and his spiritual services. J.P. Province had a photo on his desktop of a place, a mini stone labyrinth located behind Seton Hospital in North Austin. It was the perfect place, but I made a mistake of trying to kill two birds with one stone. I asked Nero to look at my Bad Goddess cartoon to see if there was a bad spiritual vibe off of them, if anything was wrong. Nero said it was the third cartoon, The Humor and the Heartbreak, aka Misrepresentation of Our Gods to the Media. 
When I made the cartoon, I used the Nord's image and had them complain and express what they really thought of Kazuki Fujishima's series. Day in and day out, for the go for All oh My Goddesses' decade-long run, the real Nords have been accosted by anime fans in the afterlife, who sought them out hoping for a Beldani Erd and Skull from the cartoon show, only to get the surprise of their life. I meant it as a joke, but the real Verdandi Erd and Skull meant it for real. Nero felt a spiritual en energy emanating off the cartoon, like it had been watched by a goddess, and the emotion suggested that she was amused by how I used my own sick and twisted sense of humor to convey how she really felt about the anime series. Nero also felt that my obsession with the goddesses opened myself up to them during the writing process, and they influenced me to express their true opinions. And upon that revelation, I thought back to all the times I got hit with that uncontrollable inspiration during the series. Were the goddesses manipulating me? Did the goddesses somehow manipulate Angela into leaving me so they could get my family out of the way and have me to themselves? So I asked Nero to come up with a list of questions to ask him on camera. They were interesting questions. I'll list them here. What is your name? What is the name of your business? Are you available on social media? What is your background of study in witchcraft? What is the spirit initiation? How does your practice compare to those with more formalized study? What are some of the things you do to help other people? Do you offer courses? How can I study with you? How do you balance the materialistic and the spiritual, the scientific and the occult? How does being other can play into your spirituality, also being transgender? How do all of these things link back to your craft? As a side note, Otherkin is a human that feels like they have been reincarnated as a soul of a fantasy creature like an elf or a dragon. How do you feel about witchcraft as a method of resistance and activism? What would you tell people having difficulty with the spirits in the spirit world? What is your advice to those seeking a deeper connection to the gods? What do you recommend to those wanting to do journey work either with you or someone else? What do you suggest to those seeking out tarot services from you or anyone else? How does fiction and storytelling interact with the occult and esoteric spirituality? Are there psychological and physical difficulties that come with being intentionally spiritually gifted? Do you have any other closing thoughts or things you wish to discuss further? Sadly, I would never get to answer those questions, and it's a damn shame because it sounded like it would have been an interesting movie. J.P. Provins was going to do the interview on camera for me, and in the third act, I would step in front of the camera with Nero, and we would do a spiritual journey to Earth's well to see if we could appease the goddesses. Nero suggested I find some mead, mead which can be bought at the local specs, and something handwoven. Mysteriously, something handwoven appeared out of nowhere on my chair in my living room. I have never seen it there before. It was a sign from God. As the days led up to the shoot, it felt like J.P. Provins might have some scheduling problems. It also looked like it was going to rain that day at the shoot. I was going to pick up Nero at Austin Community College and drove down there in advance to take a picture to help him confirm where we would meet. I also drove down there to get some opening footage test shots at a labyrinth behind a hospital for the opening credits. But on the drive down to Capitol Texas Highway, something happened. I started getting phone calls, which I answered when I was stopped at a traffic light. From out of nowhere, my mother and grandmother's nurses were calling, telling me she had an appointment she forgot to write down. I told them it was too late to turn around and kept going. As I got to the hospital, suddenly my wife Angela called to tell me that by pure coincidence, she was having surgery at that hot same hospital on the day after the film shoot. It was as if the goddesses were trying to tell me something. In the All My Goddess cartoons, the early ones, there was this gimmick called the System Force. Whenever somebody tried to catch the goddesses in the act of using magic on camera or separate Kriichi and Beldandi, freak acts of fate would prevent them from doing so. I was planning on having a real spiritualist uh, invoke the goddesses on camera, and it felt like the things were coming out of the woodworks to prevent it from happening. It felt like the goddesses were threatening me, and if I went through with the shoot, Angela might not wake up from her surgery. I told Nero, and he said that I appeared to live in a whole different reality than he did. Nero was forced to back out, saying that his life was in a very bad place, and it looked like he might be homeless soon, and he could not afford the bad luck. And so the documentary for Deloitte's uh, Spiritual Services was cancelled. But I still have the test opening credits privately posted on YouTube. You can see it for yourself. I decided that enough was enough. I was just going to have to do the bloat to contact the goddesses myself. I video recorded it for Bad Goddess and I did a fucking terrible job of it. In the video you can see, clearly see I was spooked by something, but I don't say what. My life was falling apart and it became clear to me that the goddesses of fate might be responsible. 
I appealed to them. I explained to them that Bad Goddess was intended to be a modern update of humor presented in the original anime series. It was meant to bring in a new audience. It was a farce, a spoof, a satire. I don't know if my message reached them, but it was worth a try. Now that I look at that video, it's too goddamn dark to look at.